Hello everyone, welcome back to the Dork Side. It is I, your friendly neighborhood dork in the woods on my dual sport. Today we're going to talk about essential, or at least the first mods I feel like you should do, or consider doing, to your dual sport motorcycle. That's right everyone, I am the dork on the road and I want to be your internet riding buddy. And I'm better than your regular riding buddies because I'm available whenever you want. And I come with a mute button, so please consider subscribing if you're interested in more motorcycling shenanigans. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when I post new content just like this. So my dad just picked up a new to him, a brand new actually Suzuki DR200, his first dual sport bike. And it's really got my wheels turning on um, what kind of what kind of mods he needs to do or should do to it right away. And also, you know, some good Christmas gift ideas. But it's it processing through that, it's interesting to kind of think about what maybe the first first five or more mods that you should consider doing to a dual sport. So if you are a new dual sport rider and or you just got yourself a new bike or even a seasoned veteran and you're wondering what kind of mods would be most useful or helpful or protective for your bike, let's talk a little bit about it. So first, I think let's talk about protection mods. So my philosophy when I first got this bike was protect my investment. And to that end, I started out with mods that protected the bike or protected parts of the bike, knowing that as a new rider, I was very likely to drop or otherwise um, mishandle the motorcycle. And I have dropped this bike a lot of times on the trails and in the woods. So I've been really grateful for some of the protection I've added to it over the years. The first thing that I bought, and sorry, I would like show you these things, but uh, you know, while I'm riding, it's a little bit hard. The most important piece of protection I think that you can add to your motorcycle in terms of protecting the part that would cost the most to fix is a skid plate. Uh, so I have the uh, the Flatlands Racing Aluminum Skid Plate for this, but there are a lot of different versions that you can get for whatever dual sport bike it is that you ride. But that skid plate protects the bike from underneath, it protects it from rocks and sticks, um, it also protects it from if you go over, like I've gone over logs and, or rocks and had the front suspension compressed enough that I hit the skid plate on the bottom. Um, and so that would be have been directly onto the engine. If I hadn't done that, uh, this skid plate in particular also has like little wings that protect the oil filter and the water pump, both of which stick out far enough that they could be seriously damaged in the crash. Hi Chipmunk, uh, if you weren't careful. So that skid plate, a lot of bikes come with a skid plate, but the stock ones are generally not amazing. The one that comes with the CRF250L is very thin plastic and it only goes between the frame rails. So it gives you very little protection. It would deflect a piece of gravel, uh, but I feel like that's about it. So if you are trying to protect your dual sport looking at mods, I would recommend thinking about a skid plate. I would recommend that wholeheartedly. Second protection mod, and probably my favorite because I've gotten the most use out of it, is these here, these hand guards. So these are the Acherbys hand guards, Acherbys X Pro or something like that something pro hand guards and there's an aluminum bar that runs all the way through them so they're very very sturdy there are two kinds of these there are the ones that have an aluminum bar that are actually meant to protect you against a drop and there are ones that just kind of stick out that protect your hands from branches these protect my hands from branches and protect my levers which is why they're so important um, because when you drop your bike the end of your handlebar tends to be the thing that hits first if you, mine are all scratched up because of it because when I've dropped this bike, and I have dropped it quite a bit, that's usually what it lands on. So these things, if you get ones that have aluminum, this, the plastic on the outside is helpful and awesome, but not essential, because the whole point is to keep your levers from contacting the ground. I've never broken a lever, knock on wood, but I definitely would have if I hadn't had these guards. It would have been, that's definitely something that would have happened. Second mod I would strongly consider is hand guards. If you're gonna be doing any type of off-road riding, or it's p potential you might drop your bike. After hand guards, in terms of performance, something to consider. And maybe it just depends on how you ride. If you're doing a lot of street riding, this is probably not like a huge priority, depending on what tires your bike comes with. But if you don't get very off-roady tires and you plan on doing any off-road riding, uh, I would consider upgrading those tires. So I've got a D606 on the rear, which I like a lot, and the Pirelli MT21 on the front. Those are really good all-around choices that can be ridden on the road, but it's a 9010 tire, so it's got a ton of knobs, meat, and does really well in all kinds of terrain. So that's why I have them on here. So a tire upgrade is a good thing to consider. And along with that, if you want to go crazy, if your bike didn't come with rim locks, think about getting rim locks. 
I've got the Motion Pro light locks on this bike. And uh, while I was in there, I put in heavy duty tubes in the front and back too. So uh, I would just say that's probably all counts as one thing. And the one thing is upgrade your tires, tire system. So if you're gonna put new tires on, Take, it's easy enough to put the new tubes in if you're going to upgrade them and uh, rim locks if your bike doesn't come with them are handy if you want to run low PSI and because you get a lot more traction that way but not worry about your tire spinning your wheel spinning inside your tire and shearing off your valve stem so that's handy so that's number three so number one skid plate number two hand guards number three tires and the tire system that's pretty important i think number four and full disclosure i have not bought this one yet but the more i see other people's bikes who have and i get on them and ride them i realize it's something that i really want for my bike and it's an inexpensive mod so if you're going to be riding in rough terrain and standing up on your bike a lot in most cases the stock foot pegs suck they're not very wide and they're not they don't feel very strong or confidence inspiring and you can upgrade foot pegs really easily it's a quick and easy operation so um, lots of companies make upgraded foot pegs for dual sport bikes so think about upgrading those foot pegs that's something i would consider on your bike and the number five first mod that i would think about and it, again all this depends on the kind of riding you're going to do and there are other things that are handy but i wouldn't call essential like i love these double tick mirrors but i wouldn't call them essential they're just awesome i love these uh pro taper pillow top grips but the grips i had on here would have functioned they don't add anything to the my the motorcycle they're just personal preference but the other thing that i've gotten the most use out of is my rear rack and i have a i have the cheapest one you can buy for this bike it's like eight, 70 or 80 bucks on amazon oasis i think is the company but if you can get a rack for your bike you can do a lot with it you can anchor it and i wouldn't put a lot of weight on it obviously but i use it to keep the back end from hopping around i attach a strap to it when i put it in the back of the truck uh, I've got right now my fender bag is actually on my rear rack uh, but I've also got a tail bag that I slap on there sometimes if you ever think about doing moto camping and stuff you're going to want that it's helpful to have that rack to put gear on you can't put a ton of weight on them but it is sure nice to have the option I strapped a tripod to it one time when I was riding around and wanted to have it for extra awesome camera shots because these bikes come with just a flat plastic rear fender that sticks out and you can't really do anything with it it's just kind of wasted space so if you get a rack it suddenly becomes a lot more functional so that's something to consider that's a fifth thing that i would think about and that's just five so there's a, like i said a ton of other things i got the seat cover tank bag is fantastic and all this gear is linked below under crf250l mods but uh those are the first five that i would consider if i were just getting into dual sport riding or that i'm considering recommending and or purchasing as gifts for my father for his new dual sport bike so what do you think what are what do you think are like the first essential mods that you should put on a motorcycle a dual sport bike to make it off-road ready because i don't think factory they they come set up to be street bikes they don't come with a lot of off-road things that you need right they because they consider those things optional to bring the price down so the five again just to recap skid plate hand guards tires r tires and in that i'm throwing in rim locks and tubes foot pegs and a rear rack those are the five all right thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the video i hope uh you got an idea or two and i'm curious to hear what i missed what was essential because you know i'm out here riding i know I, I probably forgot to mention something so please let me know in the comments thank you for watching please consider subscribing if you haven't and as always do not forget to be excellent to each other uh, thank you All right, let's go. Oh man, this thing is little. I am test riding, reviewing, giving you my thoughts on the Suzuki DR200.